Hi guys. So today I want to talk a little bit about stencils and all of the things you can do and put through stencils. Um, I've showed a little of these tips throughout some of my videos, but I just kind of wanted to compile them together. I find that this time of year that's coming up is really when I dig my stencils out because it's fall um, and there's a lot of seasonal stencils that I have for this time of year. So I just wanted to show those things. So there are a variety of stencils out there. These are the Tim Holtz stencils. I put them all on a little ring here. So here are some of his larger stencils and now he also sells the mini stencils. So the mini stencils you can see are a little bit smaller and they normally have the same design but a smaller version of the design and he sells these in a little three pack. Um, so I have some, quite a collection of some of the larger and some of the smaller ones that I've collected over the years. Also, there are stencils that you can purchase in the home decor section of your local craft store. So this is a pretty large stencil, but I really like this design, this kind of mosaic design. And this was over at the home decor. I mean, it even shows you like if you wanted to redo like a, a dresser or something, what you would use it for. But don't pass by this section if you're looking for stencils because there's a lot of stencils that aren't in the paper craft area that you could find that might be useful for you and what you're looking for. And then you also have the option of making your own stencils. So there's a couple of ways to do that. I don't know if Tim Holtz sells this anymore. He called it mask sheets, but basically it's a sticky stencil. Um, the one side is going to be your normal plastic. And then the other side, there's some removable adhesive so that you could use it to make a mask or a stencil. And then um, Silhouette sells the stencil material if you have your own a die cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette machine, you could cut your own stencils. Um, so they sell this product as well. You can use these with a number of things, not just your die cutting machine, but also with like a, um, a traditional die cutting machine, like your Big Shot, your Big Kick, whatever. So if you have a die that you like to use all the time and you want to make it into a stencil and make it a permanent stencil, you could do that. So for example... I have this stencil slash mask that I use all the time. And this is just out of that same sticky stencil material. Now this was made out of permanent material, which is why there's paper stuck all around it because that adhesive was so aggressive. Um, and it was again designed for like, if you wanted to make stencils for furniture. So that's just paper that's stuck on that adhesive. But I use this mask all the time when I am making cards because it fits a card front perfectly and oftentimes I will shade in this area and then stamp my focal image in the center center there um, and I made that myself I just took a die and cut out the circle out of that stencil material and now I have this sticky mask that I can use over and over again um, the difference between a stencil and a mask is a stencil is something that you would use to put your media through. So this would be a stencil. I'm going to stencil that ink into that image, that negative space there. A mask is the opposite. A mask is going to resist where you want that. So a mask would be this circle. If I were to mask this off, that circle is going to be protected. So for instance, this little mermaid came out of a stencil that I had made and I had, let me see if I can find that and show it to you. It's in my media book. Okay, so here I had made a stencil and I had colored in that area of the mermaid. Now, if I were to put this down and color around the mermaid, then this would be a mask. It's protecting that area by masking it off. So um, some people call it the negative and the positive. It's, it's just the part of the stencil where you have a stencil and a mask. A lot of companies now are selling both of them together. So you get the stencil and you get the mask. So you can decide how you want to use it. Um, so there's a couple different companies out there. You can find them anywhere if you search stencils. There's a lot of variety for anything you're looking for. This is a very popular one. This is the My Favorite Things Cloud Stencil. So it has four different edges for you to lay down your ink or media, whatever you're using, to give it that cloud look. 
another popular one now. I'm going to turn on the overhead light here, guys, because I think it'll be a little brighter. Are these, um, I'm sorry about the glare, layered stamps so you can get one or two or three layers, maybe even more, and you can use them individually or you can stack them together and make a design. And I will, I'll demonstrate this one in just a moment. This one is an Alta new one, which is called the Cube Builder, and it doesn't look like very much, but again, you ink through it, turn the stencil ink again, turn the stencil ink again, and it gives you this really cool 3D look, so I'll demonstrate as that one as well. The other thing I like to do with stencils, probably the most common thing, is to put things through the stencil. So, for example, this um, Sea Star stencil, or sand, what do you call it, Sand Dollar? No, Starfish, sorry. <laughs> Starfish is I like to take this stencil and then I take synthetic sand paste here and I will mix a, a little bit of ink in with the sand to give it some color because it comes white and put that through the stencil and when it dries it'll be a nice uh, tinted brown color um, through the texture of the stencil there. So that's really cool for like a beachy design. Another one I like to use is this brick design one. If you're doing anything, if you're doing, for instance, Christmas time is coming up, so you might be doing the outdoor houses, showing snow, things like that. You can go through the bricks here, maybe tint the uh, media paste or whatever you're using, texture paste to a reddish color or a brick color, and then you can make it this uh, brick look. Um, you could do like a, a chimney and have Santa Claus coming out of the chimney. There are wood stencils. I mean, there's all different companies. Here's one that's a Gina Marie design stencil, and it has this really cool like ring to it. I'm trying to find a piece of dark paper to put behind it. But it has this, um, you can see this like ring design. So there's a lot of cool companies out there for that. Um, one of the tricks I showed in a video before is using texture paste, transparent paste. This is exactly the same thing that people are using to replace deco foil. It's the same exact stuff, guys. So it comes on, it's like a very thick, clear glue. If I could get the lid off, here we go. So you can see, it's very easy to spread. When it dries, it dries completely clear. When it is completely dry, and this was using a Gina Marie Designs butterfly stencil for this. And I do have a video on this. Um, when it is completely dry, it's hard. It's clear and it's hard. But you can see there is a little bit of dimension there. And all I did was put some Creative Vision Designs foil over top and ran it through my mink machine. And you can see that foil sticks to wherever that texture paste was. So you don't need to buy any special foiling um, medium. This will work with any any heat transfer foil. You put it through your laminator or your mink machine and you could see how beautifully that stencil design gave a little bit of texture and the foil stuck to it. And again that's just using transparent texture paste gloss. The matte will work as well. Another card that I made was using and I showed this video last year when I having a little bit of problem with my Nouveau paste, but that all ended up working out. But you can use Nouveau paste or you can use any kind of stencil paste. So this is using Heritage Handcraft stencil paste in these fall colors. And again, it's just like a really thick glue. And it spreads very easily, almost like an icing. And this was the Tim Holtz Fall Leaves Stencil. Let's see here. One of my favorite ones to use this time of year. I mean, you will see that my stencil is nice and inked up and glittered because I do use this stencil all the time. I love it. Um, where you can see I used all three colors and just spread them down randomly and got this beautiful textured fall card. Here is one from Crafters Workshop. This is tree stencil. And on this one, I used some Nouveau glitter paste. So all of these things, again, spread like frosting. And I've given tips before. You want to try to tape your image down. And when you use your palette knife and you scrape the 
stuff down, you want to go in one direction. You don't want to be going up, down, back, forth, because then what happens is that media can get underneath the stencil. So you always want to try to go in one direction and start with a little and work your way up into adding. You don't want to play with it too much because, again, you're going to get that, that media stuck under the stencil and then you'll have splotches and messy areas. And then all I did with this one to finish it off was I put some Nouveau drops on top and it really looks pretty on this black paper, that bright green sparkle. Okay, speaking of sparkle, I have a couple of different examples here. So this one was just using embossing powder. This was just using gold embossing powder. I took the stencil and this is a Brutus Monroe stencil. This is new to me this year. It's a snowflake stencil. And I put the stencil down on top of the paper and I used a Versamark ink pad and just took the ink pad and rubbed it all across the stencil. And then once I lifted the stencil, I put the embossing powder down and then heated it. So that's just gold embossing powder on that stencil. Very pretty look for that one. Using the same stencil, I took some Brutus Monroe um, glitter glaze in Unicorn. And it's hard to see here, but it's a very pretty silvery glitter with rainbow specks and almost holographic. So same thing, that's like a paste. It comes in these little jars here. Um, and I just pasted that through the stencil. And the same stencil again, so you can see one stencil, I'm doing all these different designs, different media. On this one, I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but it has a lot of dimension to it. This card is actually very heavy. What I've used here is the glass bead gel. So this is golden glass bead gel. You can also tint this if you want. I wanted to leave it kind of clear. I think it stands out enough on its own. And you can see the height, the dimension on that. It's a very high. Um, and it looks cool. It really does look like snowflakes because it's these tiny little beads. And it's flexible. None of that's going to flake off my card. Okay. So a number of different things you can use there from foiling to texture paste to glad beads gels to... Um, nouveau paste to glitter paste all of those things you can put through stencils don't forget your average everyday application which would be using spritzes so there's a number of different companies that have spritz theirs I like the tattered angel spritz glimmer mist because they have that mica in there you can see that Michael and mica and you when you spray this through I always recommend having some kind of a spray box so this is my spritz box and all it is is a packaging box that I got from my favorite things. And I just put my paper down, my stencil down, and lightly spritz it. There's some paper towels in there. But it'll collect all of that mess. So that's not everywhere. You can also use stencils, again, for mixed media. So here's just a mixed media page that I made. And here I just took a little circle stencil. And I took some Heidi Swap metallic texture paste and just spread that through there and it gives it some nice dimension some nice color hers has this pearlescent sheen to it so it doesn't have to be just for a background you can use stencils for any of that so i wanted to demonstrate to you guys real quick some of these layered stencils just to show you how they look and we're just going to do our tradi traditional ink and sponge dauber mini distress ink sponge dauber and we will start with this cube builder. And stencils are very easy and versatile to take care of. They are this plastic and it's flexible enough that you could get into all the nooks and crannies. But it's also um, easy to wash. You're just going to take it right up to your sink. And I use a nail brush to clean mine off. A soft brush. And as I mentioned before, it's okay if there's some glitter and things left behind. It's really not going to hurt the design. All right, so if you want to maximize your stencil area, what a lot of people do is put tape down on this and then put your stencil over the paper and tape down again. 
However, what happens when you do that is then whatever area you put the tape on, that's not going to get any stenciled product on it. So a tip that I learned online is, this is just post-it tape, you're going to put that under your paper, so sticky side up. Okay, so now we are not covering any space on our card panel or background or whatever you're doing there. And now we're going to put the stencil down. Now what happens by doing this is that the stencil is stuck to the paper without losing any of that stamped area. Now if you wanted to move it, you could then stamp this down or tape this down, but I think we're okay right there. I'm just going to start la 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 la, can't talk today. I'm going to start with these two distress inks. This one is antique linen and this one is vintage photo. I did a project yesterday. They are both on my desk. I'm going to use the same sponge dauber for both of them just to demonstrate this stencil. And again, this is the Altenew blocks builder cube builder stencil. So I'm just starting with one area. Now what I've done is I've lined up the bottom here so that way I have an idea, you know, where to stop here. And we're just going to go in a circular motion and just start filling in the stencil. And this is just some scrap paper, nothing special here I'm using. You want to use the paper that best suits your needs for whatever project you're working at that time. Okay, so easy enough, ink is through. Now we're gonna lift our stencil, and you can leave it like that, nice diamond pattern, but what's cool about this stencil is if you turn it, trying to get this to line up here. Do we go diagonal with it? Oh, I think we turn it, that's the way it was, and then I think we turn it twice. Trying to look at this to make sure I'm lining it up correctly and it just doesn't look right. It's saying flip it over. Flip the stencil over and ink in a different color. Okay, so let me wipe this off quick. Well, it doesn't really matter at this point, but because we used distress inks, it stayed wet. All right, so flip that over. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over. So this is the side I didn't use, and we want to put it, oh, there we go. Okay, so yes, you flip it over, and you put it in the opposite direction so that it fills in the white spaces. There we go. It's okay, Nance. <laughs> so now I'm going to go in with the darker color. You can start to see the cubes of, um, show up there. And now we're going to go in with the darker color. And again, just doing that same inking. All right, now we have the reveal. So there you can see we have this cool square design, cubes design. This is fuzz coming off of my distress tool. All right, and then we have no edges that are uninked. We can cut this down to fit a card panel now. And obviously you can go do it in a variety of different colors. So it was fine if you just wanted to leave it as diamonds, but again, on this stencil, you have to flip it over, not turn it. So pretty neat there. So using the other one, this is called the Altenew Kaleidoscope Stencil A and B. So same thing, just gonna grab a piece of paper here. And 
and I'm just again trying to line up the center of the card there sticking that down I'm going to start with the lighter ink again I'm going to go from the outside and work my way towards the middle because I did have some of that darker distress ink on my sponge so from the outside just very gently sponging over the stencil working my way towards the middle where it will lighten up slightly okay so that's stencil a really nice design we could leave that the way that it is or we can go in with layering stencil and there's a there's some beautiful flowered stencils out there same thing you're just gonna look and eyeball and line this up And this time we're going to go in with the vintage photo darker distress ink. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start from the outer edges and work my way in towards the center. And for a delicate stencil like this, you might want to tape all four edges down just to secure it because all the little cuts are so delicate and thin versus using a thicker cut stencil or one that has a, a more bold design. All right, and there you can see that layered look. Not focusing. There we go. Okay. And I don't know why my lights are not cooperating today. There we go. So obviously it would look better if we did two different colors instead of two colors of brown. But you get the idea. You can use one stencil alone or you can use them together. And they, they create this cute dimensional look with that. So that is all I have for stencils, guys. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please post them down below. If you like this video, please go up and give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, go up and hit this little subscribe that's going to come down in the corner here. And if you hit the bell, it will give you notices of when I posted a video or when I am going live. Thanks again for watching, guys. Have a great day. And of course, keep on stamping. Bye.